Good morning, Southport Elementary. Good I'm Basia Gorska, and I have a pleasure to speak with you today. Thank you for inviting me. You all here today because you want to dream big, you want to be curious, and you want to have lots of fun. So that's what I will be talking about. Throughout my adventures in life, and more than a decade of climbing big mountains, I adopted the new way of thinking. I'm calling it thinking from the heart, or a seven summits concept. So today I will be talking about each big mountain, the highest mountain in each continent, and then I will talk about some concept that literally changed the way I see the world and I enjoy the world and achieve my dreams. The first concept in seven summits concept is to dream big and be curious, exactly with the topic today in your TEDx. The second concept is to get inspired. The third concept is to be open. The fourth, to be gentle and persevere. The fifth concept is to be connected. The sixth concept is to be grateful. And the last, the most important one, to have fun. So let's start from the first concept about dreaming big and being curious. And of course, I use the biggest mountain in the world, Mount Everest, to represent this concept. This is a very, very high mountain. It's over 29,000 feet. It's an altitude that the planes, the commercial planes are flying at. So it's a cruising altitude of a plane. That's how high it is. There is nearly no oxygen, so it's very hard to breathe. It's an amazing mountain. So I took this picture from the northern side, from Tibet's side, and that was my camp right there as well, so you can see my camp. In this concept, when I was your age, I saw the movie Indiana Jones. And in that movie, I saw the hanging bridges and people like going from the bridges. And I just dream about going there and experiencing it. And I was so curious how it would feel when I'm walking in a bridge like that, and I actually achieved that. And they were eating different ethnic foods, momos, and I remember my feeling that I literally remember when I was dreaming about it, when I really wanted to experience that. Think about in your life, what are you curious about? We get so busy at school with the routine, with everyday activities. Maybe if you're curious about something, Share it with your friends, share it with your teacher, maybe with your parents, and the next week and you try it. Just give it a try. And you never know, you can truly change the way you live in your life by being curious. The second concept is the concept of being inspired. And I use the largest, the highest mountain outside of Himalaya. That's the highest peak in South America. It's called Aconcagua. It's nearly 23,000 feet. It's a very beautiful big mountain. And in this concept, I want to introduce you to someone who inspired me. Her name was Wanda Rutkiewicz-Waltz. She was a Polish climber, very famous Polish climber. And I listened to her in the radio before one of her expeditions to Himalaya, and she spoke about Himalaya with such love that I just couldn't stop myself but dream about going there and experiencing it and hiking and climbing there. And I actually did. She was the first a uh, European woman to climb Mount Everest, and the first woman ever to climb K2, which is much harder than Everest. It's the second biggest mountain, but much harder. Think about in your life when, who inspires you? It could be your parents, could be your teachers, could be someone else. Just think about them and learn more about these people, because by learning more, you can actually learn new things, and you can actually learn the steps you can take to be more like your heroes. The third concept is to be open. And I use the highest mountain in Northern America in, as well as in um, uh, North America. So it's called Denali. It's based in Alaska. It's a beautiful mountain. It's around 22,500 feet. And I climbed this mountain in, I still remember the day. It was 4th of July, 2006. So I still remember the day when I was standing in the summit, super cold, like in a stormy weather, after being stranded for a week in the highest camp. So this is my best memory of the 4th of July. In this concept, I wanted you to think about um, being open to the new experiences, being open to the new people. 
and I used pictures from Himalayas. They have a tradition called puja. So before the expedition starts, their priest called the Lama comes in and puts like a protection words for all the expedition, for Sherpas that are mountain workers, for our equipment, and at the end, we have lots of fun. We eat food, we drink, and then they smear flour all over you. So I even included one picture, just grab the flour and smear all over you. Think about, for you, what being open means. If you're open for new experiences, and your parents, your teachers propose to do something, and you're like not sure because you truly don't know how you will feel by doing this, just even trying and knowing that trying will be enough and you can learn something, you can actually have fun. You can learn new things, you can meet new people. So just try new things. Just think about something you really want to try and just try it, be open to it. The next concept is based, uh, it's a gentle perseverance. And I used the mountain, my first seven summits, Mount Kilimanjaro, I climbed in 2004. And if you are ever interested in climbing, hiking, adventures, that would be the mountain to start. It's beautiful. Like every one of you can do it. If you take a week, if you prepare for it, you can do it. You can come with your family. You can see awesome animals. You can see beautiful plants. It's just amazing. Amazing. So I truly wholeheartedly recommend you try that mountain. In this concept, I'm talking about, and I'm using again pictures from Everest, I'm talking about something I call the wall, and like persevering through pain, through boredom, through really hard situations. So if you want to achieve your dream, there are always come the moment I call the wall, always. And if we expect it, you can actually conquer it. And I call it gentle perseverance, so instead of pushing, you just allow it and you slowly go through it. So I included pictures from the Kumbu Icefall, climbing the walls as well as ladders. But literally, I had situations in my mountains, especially with Everest, that I felt so tired and so in pain, and yet I just took a few days to rest, a few days to meditate, and then I conquered the mountain or I was able to climb the mountain. Think about in your life, like if you're learning skiing, for example, there comes the moment that you are either bored or super tired and you think like, I don't want to do it. It just doesn't work for me. Instead of pushing, if you take a break and just go and eat something and relax, and the next day when you come back, it's like a different day. It's so much easier. So sometimes when you do anything, practicing soccer, um, playing instruments, instead of pushing it, you just take a break, you just do something else, and when you come back to it, it can be a different experience. So instead of giving up, just allow it and, you know, like, thank you all. You just arrived. I will be dealing with you. I actually will do, I will actually conquer it. I will actually master the skill set. Even when you're learning, sometimes you just feel like, I can't learn it anymore. It's so hard. Instead of pushing, you take a break, you talk to someone, you go and do something else, and you come back to it. It's different. The next concept is being connected. And I use the highest mountain in Europe. It's Elbrus. It's around 18,000 feet. And this is also a very beautiful mountain, not very high. You can climb it in three days. It has two peaks. You can even see it, east and west. I actually climbed it in 2014 in July. It was a very nice, very nice hike. And in this concept of being connected, I'm talking about that we are all one. We are all connected. You truly really don't see it, but you can feel it sometimes. We are all connected, staying open to someone else. And when someone is upset, reaching out and asking if you can help, it's an amazing, amazing feeling for yourself, not even for someone else, just being there for someone, for your siblings, for your friends, even for someone you don't know. And here I use pictures from Everest again. And on the left, you can see how it looks on a warm day going to the Everest summit. The weather windows in big mountains are very narrow. So literally, all the climbers like huddle in the highest camp and wait for the weather window. And when they go on the summit day, you literally have like lines of people. So on a summit day like this, I had to stand for an hour without being able to move because you let people down first. So I was standing there, and I got frostbites on my feet. 
because it was so cold, literally, and I had to just stand and let people go. So we are all connected. If one person doesn't do something in a mountain, the other person can die, so we are all one. And on the right side, you can see going in Lhotse face. That's another very big mountain that's right by Everest. And it's like a line of people. So you can only be as fast as the person in front of you, as the slowest person in a line. And it's a very technical climbing as well. So think about in line when you do something in sports, you are only as good as the weakest person. So being open to them and helping them instead of criticizing may get you all perform better as a team. This is my favorite mountain. Uh, it's a Vinson Massif. I call it Big Cold Mountain. And I use, uh, I use this mountain to talk about gratitude. This mountain is located in um, Antarctica, and it's super cold, super clean and pristine, super beautiful. I climbed it, I think, in 2013. That was the most expensive seven summits because it's so remote. It actually reminded me, I don't know if you know Game of Thrones, it reminded me of this ice castles and ice wall in Game of Thrones. That's how remote it is and cold it is. Talking about gratitude, um, again, picture from Nepal, not from Vinson, not from Antarctica. I climbed Mount Everest, I was there twice, 2015, 2016. So in 2015, on April 25th, the huge earthquake killed many people and destroyed many homes, both in Nepal and in Tibet. So my trip got cut short. I was in Tibet, that first picture of Everest, and they basically sent us out from the mountain. We had to wait for our bags, and when I got back to Kathmandu, right by my hotel, that's what I saw. The houses were collapsed, people were living on a street. Here it doesn't even show in the evening. Literally, people for a year slept on a the street. They didn't have homes. So I felt so touched that when I got back home, I started raising money for my Sherpas so they can rebuild their homes and the kids can go back to school, they rebuild the school. And they did, thanks to the generosity of many people and helping people. But that really touched my heart. So the following year, 2016, and that's me, by the way, when I was standing in top of Mount Everest, I felt this overwhelming gratitude that I cried. I kind of lifted my goggles. You can't really see my eyes here. You can see my Sherpa, Sanjay Sherpa, taking my photograph. It was super cold. But I felt such overwhelming gratitude because so many people lost life. So many people lost home the year before. And then for me to come back and summit, it was just overwhelming. Think about in your life what you're grateful for, what you're thankful for. And we all want to be happy and have fun. But you truly can't have fun if you're not happy. But happiness is, for me, completely linked with gratitude. So when you feel thankful for what you have, like living in this beautiful Sacramento, being able to go to school, being able to learn, having a future, having loving family, friends, there are so many things. If you start every day just with one thought, literally, what am I thankful for? You can notice this one thing. You can notice the difference in your life right away. And this is the picture how I look. You can see the snow and icicles <laughs> hanging from my hat. And this little postcard, the Lama, I show you puja ceremony. The Lama gave you a card that has like sacred words and protects you. So I took it to the summit. I was like, I need to be protected <laughs> with the sacred word of high altitude Lama. So nothing bad will happen to my Sherpa and I. And it was so cold that I had to put one hand here because I took one photo of my Sherpa and I was really cold. And you can see the traffic and connection even on the top of the world at 20,000 and 29 feet. Bunch of people walking around you, literally. The next concept, the last one, but the most important one, is to have fun. And I'm using the last of the seven summits called either Karstens Pyramid or Punkak Jaya. It is located in um, Australia and Oceania. So it's located in Papua New Guinea. And it's a very, very adventurous land. The mountain in itself, it's just the rock climbing. And I climbed it, I think, in 2013. You have to go through the jungle, like, for a week. I mean, 
like a movies, Indiana Jones, or like very adventurous movies jungle with local people. And that's the hardest hike in the world, I heard. Climbing is not hard, it's around 16,000 feet, the same as Vincent, but literally going through that jungle and in mud and falling into rivers and climbing trees, that was an adventure and that was fun in my book. And you can see like there is a line and the guy is hiking there, climbing there. So I used two pictures to show fun. The one on the left is from Everest Base Camp. When the earthquake came through and really shook the mountain and shook all the area, uh, we had to evacuate right away. And we were at around 22,000 feet or so. So we left everything right there, just put our backpacks and left but the tents and equipment was still there. So they had to send yaks, like this big kind of cow looking animals to go and pick up our equipment. So we were stuck like for a week in a base camp, not able to go home because we were waiting for yaks. So one morning I heard the bells, they were bells, and I just jumped off my, out of my tent. And when I saw the yak, I just jumped on a yak. I was just so happy because it meant I can go home. Because without that, we couldn't leave. We were just stuck. And the one, the, the next picture is from climbing in Himalaya, the mountain called Amadablan, that after the summit I was goofing around and just climbing the wall and having fun. And I included these two pictures to show you Amadablan. You can see the yellow tents uh, on that peak. That's a camp too. You have to climb the wall. It's called the yellow wall. It's like very intimidating. You just look at it like, wow, rock climbing the wall. And then you stay in a tent and it's literally there is so little room, just a few tents. You, you just look down and it's so far. And you're so above the clouds. It's just amazing. So basically you go up and then you climb another wall and you can see the yellow tents over there. So I just love these pictures. I love that mountain. It's one of the most beautiful mountains in Himalaya. It just looks like that. So at the end of the day, if you adopt this way of thinking, like thinking from the heart, you truly will achieve your dreams and have fun. And we talk about the seven summits concept. And in the seven summit concept, you can adopt it all. You can adopt it one thing. You just can think about gratitude or you can think about uh, dreaming big, being curious every day, do something every weekend that fulfills your heart and makes you really happy outside of watching TV. You will feel grateful and thankful for what you have, and you will be so much happier. You will meet new friends, you will create new experiences, and you will learn how to share. As a next step, when you go home tonight, think about what are your dreams? What are you curious about? Write it down, and maybe tomorrow, you can start researching it, looking at the next steps, who inspires you, how can I learn more about my dream. You can talk to others, you can talk to your friends, your teachers, your parents, and achieve your dreams that way and have lots of fun. And this picture is taken after the huge storm in the highest camp in Everest. When the storm went through, after a couple of days I was stranded in a dev zone with minimal oxygen. I just opened the tent and I saw this beautiful sunset and I thought I will share that with you and ask you to follow your dreams and follow your heart. Thank you for having me here. <laughs>